Good afternoon and welcome to the 28th Military Police Company Departure Ceremony. On behalf of the leaders and soldiers of the 28th Military Police Company, thank you for joining us in commemorating the departure of the upcoming mobilization. This ceremony is designed to publicly recognize our Pennsylvania Army National Guard soldiers and families for their selfless service and dedication to duty for the mission that they are set to embark on in defense of our great nation. The 28th Military Police Company will conclude today's ceremony by casing their colors until the command's transfer of authority in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. You are all part of an honored lineage that has served our nation throughout the 250-year history of the Pennsylvania National Guard. We are honored to have with us in attendance today the following distinguished guests. Please hold all applause until the end. Assistant Division Commander Support, 28th Infantry Division, Brigadier General Jeff Diesel. Commander of the 55th Maneuver Enhancement Brigade, Colonel Brad Pearson. Command Sergeant Major of the 55th Maneuver Enhancement Brigade, Command Sergeant Major Evan Lemons. Commander of the 165th Military Police Battalion, and host of today's ceremony, Lieutenant Colonel Trisha Campbell. For the ceremony is Sergeant First Class Matt Wilson, Operations Sergeant for the 28th Military Police Company. The company command leadership team is Captain Victor Mayorkman and First Sergeant Joseph Teflin. I am Major James Curry, the 165th MP Battalion and former company commander of the 28th Military Police Company. I will be performing the duties as a master of ceremony today. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the entrance of the official party, the national anthem, and the invitation. The official party for today's ceremony is Lieutenant Colonel Trisha Campbell, Commander of the 165th Military Police Back Battalion, and Captain Victor Mayor, Commander of the 28th Military Police Company. Post the colors. Walk. The colors are present now. Post the colors. Order. Walk. Right. Face. Hey. Forward. Mark.
The commander of troops will now bring the unit to order arms and parade rest. Order arms! Parade rest! Today's invocation will be given by Chaplain Gus Berg, 165th Military Police Battalion Chaplain. I invite each of you to pray. Heavenly Father, I ask for your gracious care and keeping of the 28th Military Police Company. Defend them day by day with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in their trials and temptations. Give them courage to face the perils which are sure to face them. And grant them with a sense of your abiding presence wherever they go. Ask for your strength and perseverance for their friends and family. Strengthen them when they stand, comfort them when they when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. In their heart, may your peace which passes all understanding abide every day. I also, I also ask for your blessing on the ceremony. May it be pleasing to you and honor the history of the 28th MPs and the many traditions the Army has forged. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. A detailed accounting of the 28th Military Police Company history can be found within today's program. Please take a few moments to read and reflect upon the accomplishments of this storied unit. The 28th Military Police Company was organized in 1917 as a headquarters detachment. In July of that year, the unit was called for service to World War I. After this period of service, the unit was demobilized in 1919. The, the unit underwent a series of reorganizations and redesignations throughout the 1920s and the 1930s. In 1941, the 28th Infantry Division was reorganized and the 28th Military Police Company was framed. In February 1941, the 28th Military Police Company, along with the 28th Infantry Division, was inducted into federal service at Fort Indiantown Gap, Pennsylvania. The unit deployed, along with the division, to Europe during World War II, from October 1943 to August 1945, where they performed with distinction in France, Belgium, Luxembourg, and Germany. In 1950, the unit was activated again as part of the 28th Infantry Division for service during the Korean conflict. On November 1st, 1965, the company was reorganized and redesignated as the 28th Military Police Company. During the Vietnam conflict, the unit was designated as a selective reserve force for the period of October 1966 to September 1968. Through the late 1990s and early 2000s, the, com the company conducted annual trainings in Panama, Italy, and Germany, as well as in support of Operation Jumpstart and Operation Brightstar. In June 2002, the unit deployed a platoon to Bosnia to provide force protection in support of Operation Joint Forge. In July 2002, another platoon was deployed to Saudi Arabia in support of Operation Desert Spring. The remaining members of the unit deployed to Kosovo in March 2003, where they performed detainee operations. In January 2005, the 28th Military Police Company mobilized a platoon that was attached to the 2nd Brigade Combat Team and deployed to Iraq. They provided combat support operations for the Brigade at AR Ramadi in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. In June 2007, the company deployed to Iraq to provide detaining operations at Camp Proper, Baghdad, as well as refugee operations at Ford Operating Base Grizzly, both in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. In 2009, the 28th Military Police Company was activated for federal support for the presidential inauguration in Washington, D.C. Later in 2009, the company was again activated by the state of Pennsylvania for Operation Steel Kickoff in support of the G20 Summit hosted in Pittsburgh. In 
2010, the company was tasked to provide personnel in cooperation with Lithuanian Armed Forces to Afghanistan in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. Together, the Unified Nations formed the Police Operational Mentor Liaison Team with the mission of providing training, partnership, and mentoring to Afghan National Police in the Gore province of Afghanistan. There were then three subsequent teams comprised of both Army and Air Guard personnel, making that mission the first joint force multi-nation pomlet in Afghanistan. Following the devastation of Superstorm Sandy in New York in November of 2012, the unit was activated to provide humanitarian assistance in coordination with the New York Police Department and Federal Emergency Management Agency. During this time, the company was tasked with providing military police support, refueling operations, home inspections, and welfare patrols in the communities of Staten Island, Coney Island, the Far Rockaways, and parts of Queens. In September 2018, the 28th Military Police Company was called again and mobilized in support of Operation Inherent Resolve. The 28th deployed soldiers to support all customs operations across 10 different countries in the Middle Eastern region, to include Kuwait, Bahrain, Jordan, Iraq, Afghanistan, and Qatar. This mission ran concurrent with the planning and execution of the withdrawal from Syria in early 2019. And now, 2024, these soldiers standing in front of us will be the newest chapter of the 28th Military Police Company's legacy and make their mark on their history. It is with my distinct pleasure to introduce our first speaker of the afternoon, the commander of the 28th Military Police Company, Captain Victor Mayorko. Good afternoon, everybody. I want to thank our distinguished guests for joining us today. I also want to thank my family for making the trip out here. I want to thank all the family members and friends that came out to support their soldier. Thank you for that. As you walked in, I hope you noticed uh, little mementos that are sitting on the back table. It's from our soldier family readiness group leader, Kayla Miller, and it's something uh, that she wanted to make so you could uh, keep to remember your soldier while we're deployed. Uh, the SFRG program is a program that I, I well, I hold dear to my heart, and it's something that I wanted to start with the, with the company, and it's just started. Uh, she's going to be putting out more information while we're deployed, uh, just to keep uh, the families informed of what's going on while we're uh, out, away from, uh, from home. So she volunteered her time, and it's. Uh, I wanted to thank her a lot. Unfortunately, she couldn't make it. She had uh, additional family duties to perform, uh, but we still thank her for all her sacrifices. Days leading up to today, I was trying to think of many things to say. But where, where would I begin? To be, begin with the thoughts that are running through my mind, or our loved ones, or my thoughts of longing, loving, and comfort. Can I put ease the emptiness of the uncertainty and the unknown? Then I realized that no words, no written speeches, can alleviate that uncertainty. Then I started to think, of what to say, as this not a typical deployment that most people would think of. But what is a typical deployment? Deployment is not always going into battle, going into combat, into a combat zone. In fact, most deployments take you on a humanitarian mission, a trip to the southwest border, or sitting at Joint Operations Center in Qatar. Sure, we're headed someplace very warm, humid, and somewhat tropical. The thing that got me thinking of one of the dangers that we do face in the law enforcement community, and that is uh, complacency. So, true, we're not going to combat, but the people we're going to be dealing with were once any combatants, so we can't forget that. We need to make sure that we don't become complacent. So, 28, look to your left, to your right. It is up to all of us to ensure that we look after each of, each of us and ensure we don't become complacent. The families here, what I want to tell you is that your husbands, your wives, your sons, your daughters have been trained with years of experience and countless hours of training and planning. 
Wayne, I know you are ready for the task ahead. I'm confident with our leaders within the company, they are dedicated to ensuring the safe return home. 28, by standing here today, you're earning so much credit to yourselves, our country, and your families. This is a great sacrifice that you and your families are giving up, all to support this great nation. Not that many are willing to make that sacrifice anymore, but yet you did, and I thank you for all that. I want to thank our special guests and families, in attendance that have traveled many miles to see to wish as well and a safe journey. But in closing, I want to tell our loved ones, families, and friends who leave behind, quoting a close friend of mine, we won't say goodbye, but we'll see you later. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Marokan. Ladies and gentlemen, our final speaker is the commander of the 165th Military Police Battalion, Lieutenant Colonel Tricia Campbell. All right, 28, look here. Look here. Take your hats off. Take a breath. Shake it out. Cool. All right, it's a little warm in here, right? All right, take a breath. Shake it out. You got this. All right, good. All right, let's do this. Distinguished guests, family, friends, and most importantly, members of the 28th Deputy Company, thank you for attending today's ceremony. As we stand on the cusp of the 28th MP Company's deployment, I wish to extend my gratitude for your service to our nation. I stand before you humbled and proud, as each of you have willingly answered the call of service, continue to uphold our values, and safeguard the freedoms of our nation. This mission is another chapter in the 28th MP Company's honored history. Standing before you today are soldiers not only from the 28th MP Company, but also soldiers from the 1069th MP Company, HHD 165 MP Battalion, and soldiers from 28th Infantry Division Headquarters and Headquarters Battalion. You are entrusted with 28th MP history and the tremendous responsibility that extends beyond oneself. Represent well who we are as Americans, who we are as military police officers, and who we are as members of the Pennsylvania Army National Guard, even amidst the challenging circumstances you are sure to face. To the families, your love and support is carried forward with your service member. Your strength and support allow us to do what we do. Your support equals our success. While separated by distance, know that you are with your soldier every step of the way until you are united again. Soldiers, as you prepare to depart, carry forward our values, uphold principles of freedom and justice, and know your families are supporting you from home. Take this mission seriously and remember why you are there, and live up to the already established legacy of the 28th. Take care of each other as families do, and emerge stronger, more united, more resilient than ever before. You all have my deepest respect and admiration. Strength for justice. Thank you for your remarks, Lieutenant Colonel Campbell. The commander of troops will now bring the unit to attention for the casing of the guide arm. time-honored tradition, the 28th Military Police Company Guidon is now being cased. The casing of the Guidon is conducted prior to a deployment to symbolize a unit's change in location as the Guidon goes where the commander goes. It will not be uncased until the company arrives in Cuba when the 28th MP Company conducts their transfer of authority ceremony with the outgoing 357th MP Company. Ladies and
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the benediction playing in the 28th Infantry Division song and the Army song. I invite each of you to pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your presence this afternoon. As these soldiers depart to forge another chapter in the 28th D Company's legacy, over them and their loved ones, I ask your blessing. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. This I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Military Police Company and the 165th Military Police Battalion, thank you for attending today's ceremony.